Welcome to NPTEL online course on machine learning and deep learning, fundamentals and applications. In my last class, I explained the concept of k-means clustering, which is an unsupervised clustering technique. In the k-means clustering algorithm, first I have to randomly select k number of centroids. After this, I have to assign data points to these centroids based on the nearest neighbor distance. And after this, I have to recompute the centroids. And this process I have to do iteratively until the convergence condition is not satisfied. And that is the fundamental concept of the k-means clustering. In the k-means clustering, I will be getting the hard decision boundaries. That means a particular data sample is assigned to a particular cluster. There is no possibility that a particular data sample may belong to another cluster. Today in this class, I will be explaining the concept of the fuzzy k-means clustering. In this case, the concept is very similar to the k-means clustering. Only one difference is, in this case, I will be getting the soft decisions. That means a particular data sample may belong to another class also. That means a particular sample may belong to another cluster also. So that possibility is defined by the fuzzy membership grid. The fuzzy membership grade lies between 0 and 1. Suppose the fuzzy membership grade is 0.9, that means there is a high possibility that a particular sample may belong to another class. So that consideration I will be considering in case of the fuzzy k-means clustering. And fuzzy k-means clustering and the k-means clustering has many applications, particularly the clustering of data points. And also in case of the suppose image processing applications, this can be applied for image segmentation. The fuzzy k-means clustering or simple k-means clustering can be applied for image segmentation. This is one important application. Let us discuss about fuzzy k-means clustering, which is a uh, soap decision based clustering technique. So in my last class, I explained the concept of the k-means clustering. You can see I have considered some data points and randomly I am selecting some centroid. So in this example, I am selecting three centroids. One is the this one, the red one, blue and the green one. So these three centroids, I am selecting randomly for clustering. After this, in the step number one, assign points to the clusters based on the minimum distance. So I have to find the distance between the data points and the centroids. And based on the minimum distance, I can assign a particular data point to a particular cluster center that is that is the centroid. After this I have to recompute the means and uh, finally what we have to do repeat the steps 1 and 2 until the convergence condition is not satisfied. So that is the concept of the k-means clustering. In my last class if you remember cluster centers I am defining by mu and by c. So in one algorithm, I have shown the cluster center by mu i and also in another uh, representation, I have shown as ci. But today I am considering this cluster center as theta. So I am considering theta as a cluster center or the centroid. So theta we are considering. So in the k-means clustering, First, we have to select the cluster centers, theta 1, theta 2, theta k. So these are the centroids. So I am considering, suppose this is a vector. So these are cluster centers. And the input vector is x. That is assigned to a particular class. The class is suppose omega j. And corresponding to this class, the cluster center is theta j. So that means x is assigned to the cluster center theta j based on the condition. The condition is if the distance between the input vector and theta j is less than the distance between. The distance is the Euclidean distance we are considering. Distance between x and theta i for i is not equal to j. So based on this distance measure, I can assign the data point x to the cluster center theta j. 
and that is actually corresponding to the class omega j suppose. So, class information is not available, but we are selecting uh, the centroids randomly. So, in case of the k means clustering, uh, what we have to consider? Uh, we are having the clusters, suppose this is one cluster, this is another cluster and maybe this is another cluster. So, after doing the k means clustering, I am getting these clusters. So, this is suppose corresponding to the cluster center theta 1, this is corresponding to the cluster center theta 2, this is corresponding to the cluster center theta 3 like this. So, we are getting the hard decision boundaries, the hard boundaries we are getting. So, these boundaries, the hard boundaries. or that means this is also called a creeps. That means we are getting the discrete boundaries. The meaning is that this suppose if I consider this particular sample, this particular sample will belong to the cluster corresponding to the cluster centroid theta 2. There is no possibility that this particular sample may belong to another classes. Suppose it may belong to this class also, there may be some possibility or this point may belong to this cluster also, there is some possibility, but that possibilities we are not considering. So, one particular data point is assigned to a particular cluster. That is the hard boundary or hard decision or the discrete boundary we are getting in case of the k-means clustering. In case of the fuzzy k-means clustering, we will be considering the possibility that means, a particular sample may belong to another class classes also. Uh, so, this possibility is defined by the membership grade. So, I will be explaining this concept. Already I told you the k means clustering has many applications. Like here I am showing one example corresponding to the image segmentation. You can see this is the input image and we are doing the clustering based on the intensity information. So, in the second figure, you can see the result of the clustering and in this case we are considering uh, the fissure is the intensity uh, value of the pixel. So, based on this fissure that is the grayscale intensity value we can do the clustering. And in the third case also what we are doing uh, based on the color information we can do the clusters. So, clustering based on the color. So, this k means clustering algorithm can be employed for image segmentation. And this is also another example for image segmentation. So, you can see I am showing the original image and corresponding to this original image you can you can see I am considering k is equal to 2, k is equal to 2 means I am considering 2 centroids and corresponding to this you can see the results, results of the segmentation, this result. Okay. Similarly, corresponding to k is equal to 3, you can see the result of the segmentation k is equal to 3 that means we are considering 3 centroids. So, k is equal to 10 you can see the results. So, if you see the quality of the image in the last row. So, you can see the quality of the image corresponding to k is equal to 10 is better than the k is equal to 2. So, that means the compression depends on the value of k. If k is equal to high that means I am getting the good quality image segmented image and if k is equal to 2. Uh, the quality is not significant and you can see all the segmented outputs corresponding to the original image, the original image already I have shown here. So, now directly I will explain the concept of the fuzzy k means clustering. Fuzzy k means clustering. So, what is the difference between the Cripps case and the fuzzy case? So, suppose if I consider a set A 
okay then suppose uh, we are considering a variable suppose the domain is x and suppose x i whether it is an element of x x i is an element of x so we are defining the membership grid that is defined by u a x that will be equal to 0 if and only if x i is not an element of a a is a set and it is equal to 1 if and only if x i is an element of a the a is a set this is the example of the Cripps set so what do you mean by Cripps set I can show you pictorially so suppose in this side I am plotting x and in this side I am plotting the membership grid this is a membership grid so this is I can write this is a membership grid so if I consider the Cripps case it is the representation of the Cripps case so the high value is 1 because it has two value either 1 or 0 so if x i is an element of a then the output is 1 that means the membership grade is 1 and if x i is not an element of a then the membership grade is 0 so this is actually corresponding to the Cripps case and in case of the fuzzy set what I can show you in case of the fuzzy I can consider a curve like this this is the representation of a fuzzy set this is one membership function I am showing like this so it corresponds to the fuzzy set so here you see the membership grid it may be 0.5 also or it may be 0.9 also so the membership grid the membership grid lies between 0 and 1 corresponding to the fuzzy set so the membership grid lies between 0 and 1 in case of the fuzzy set it may be 0 0.9 it may be 0 0.8 and in case of the Cripps set only two values we are considering either 0 or 1 that is the Cripps set so this briefly I am showing to so the distinction between the Cripps set and the fuzzy set now uh, directly I will come to the fuzzy k-means clustering so let us move to the next slide so fuzzy k-means clustering it is actually the soft decision base soft decision base partitioning soft decision based partitioning that means the meaning is one element may belong to more than one set I can write one element may belong to belong to more than one set So it depends on the membership grid suppose the membership grid is 0.9 that means there is a high possibility that particular data point may belong to another cluster also in this case we are considering these classes omega 1 omega 2 omega 3 these classes we are considering so x is the Fisher vector x is assigned to the class omega 1 and corresponding to this the membership grid is u1 x that is the membership grid that is actually the degree of belongingness similarly x may be assigned to the class omega 2 and in this case the membership grid is u2 x so these are actually the membership grid membership grid 
membership grade means the degree of belongingness. So, for fuzzy k means clustering, we are considering the centroid, the centroid is theta j that is parameterized, parameterized representative of the zth cluster. So, in this case we are considering theta as a cluster center. So, theta j means the parameterized representative of z cluster. So, this vector theta I can write like this theta 1 transpose these are vectors theta 2. So, all these centroids that means k number of centroids we are considering. Since we are considering the fuzzy k means clustering similar to the k means clustering in this case also we are considering k number of centroids. So, theta 1, theta 2, theta k these are the centroids the k number of centroids and we are considering the matrix the matrix is u that is the n cross k matrix. So, what is n? n means number of patterns. that means number of data points. What is the meaning of k? k is nothing but the number of classes that means number of classes means the centroids. So, randomly I have to select k number of centroids. So, move to the next slide. So, in my previous slide I defined the matrix u and that is the n cross k. n is nothing but the number of patterns and k is nothing but the number of classes or number of centroids. So, i j element of u, u is the matrix is u j x i that is the i j element. So, now we are considering the distance, uh, we may consider the Euclidean distance. So, distance between the input vector x i and the theta j, theta j is nothing but the centroid that is we can find the similarity, similarity or dissimilarity between the vector x i that is the input vector and the theta j that is the centroid. We find the similarity between x i and theta j. Now, we are defining the fuzzy distortion or the cost function the fuzzy distortion or the cost function j theta u summation i is equal to 1 to n j is equal to 1 to k. So, capital N means we are considering n number of samples and capital K means we are considering k number of centroids u i j that is the membership grade the distance between x i input vector x i and the centroid theta j. So, we are defining the fuzzy distortion or the cost function like this. This u i j already I told you this u i j is nothing but the membership grade that is the degree of belongingness that means the meaning is what is the meaning of membership grade grade of membership of x i in the z cluster. So, that means what we are considering the grade of membership of x i in the z cluster. So, for all the clusters we have to determine the grade of membership. 
In this case, you can see I am considering one parameter here, the q is the parameter. If I consider q is equal to 1, that is actually the hard decision or maybe I can write the Cripps, that is the Cripps case q is equal to 1 and if q is greater than 1, that corresponds to the fuzzy decision. So, we may consider q is equal to 2, q is equal to 3 like this and typically we can consider q is equal to 2. That is a fuzzy decision for fuzzy decision q should be greater than 1 and if I consider q is very very high, q is suppose very very high, suppose q is equal to infinity, then actually it is the total fuzzy, total fuzzy that means total ambiguity that we cannot distinguish. Uh, these patterns. So, that is not the ideal case. The case is q should be greater than 1, that is the fuzzy decision. And if q is equal to 1, that is nothing but the simple k means clustering. So, if I consider q is equal to 1, that is nothing but the simple k means clustering, that is the hard decision or the Cripps decision I am getting. So, these are the parameters, the q is a parameter. After this, I am considering some constraints in case of the fuzzy k means clustering. So, move to the next slide. So, some of the constraints we are considering. So, what are the constraints? j is equal to 1 to k u i j is equal to 1. So, for all the uh, clusters we are considering the membership grade j is equal to 1 to k and that should be equal to 1. So, where this the membership grade should lies between 0 and 1. So, i is equal to 1 to n that means n number of data points and j is equal to 1 to k that means k number of centroids and also we are considering the condition the summation i is equal to 1 to n and that is the summation of all the membership grades should be less than n and it should be greater than 0. So, j is equal to 1 to up to k actually here you can see what actually we are determining uh, what is the meaning of this the grade of membership of x i in the z cluster is related to to the grade of membership of x i to the rest of k minus 1 clusters. That means, we are considering the grade of membership of x i in the z cluster is related to the grade of membership of x i to the rest of remaining clusters. So, these constraints we are considering for the fuzzy k means clustering. Now, let us write the algorithm of the fuzzy k means clustering. So, move to the next slide, the algorithm. Fuzzy k means clustering. So, first like the simple k means clustering, we have to randomly select the centroids. So, choose theta j 0 as the 
initial estimate for theta j so j is equal to 1 2 up to k so randomly i have to select the centroids that is the initial estimate for theta j so k number of centroids i have to consider after this i have to initialize the iteration number so t is equal to 0 that is the iteration number repeat So, I am considering these two loops. So, first loop is for i is equal to 1 to n because we have n number of data points for j is equal to 1 to k, k number of cluster centers and we are considering this is the membership grid in the iteration t 1 divided by suppose p is equal to 1 to k, k number of centroids we are considering d that is the distance between x i and theta j, a particular theta j we are considering in the iteration t and d is the distance, this distance is the distance between x i and theta p, p it is from 1 to k. So, for all the clusters we have to determine the distance. So, this is 1 by q minus 1. So, we have to determine the membership grid. So, this expression I can determine from the cost function, the fuzzy cost function I can determine this membership grid. So, equation number 1 I will later explain how to determine this one. So, we have to determine the membership grid like this and after this end for i end for j this is in the first iteration what actually we are doing we are finding the distance between x i and theta j. So, these are the clusters, all these clusters. From x i we are finding the distances to all the clusters. So, suppose this is theta j. So, we are finding the distances between x i and theta j. So, based on this actually we can determine the membership grid. So, if you see the expression for the membership grid, in the numerator you can see what we are doing, we are finding the distance between x i and the theta j. In the denominator what we are determining, we are considering the distance between x i and all the clusters because the p is from 1 to k. So, for p is equal to for p is equal to 1, we have to determine the distance between x i and theta 1. For p is equal to 2, I have to find the distance between x i and the theta 2. Like this, for k number of clusters, I have to determine this. That is in the denominator. In the numerator of the expression of the membership grid, I have to find the distance between x i and the theta j. So, that I have to determine. After this move to the next slide, uh, we have to consider the next iteration because this is about the membership grid, how to determine the membership grid. Uh, based on this, we can determine the degree of belongingness. The membership grid means the degree of belongingness. And after this, I have to recompute the centroids. So, move to the next slide. So, we are considering the next iteration that is t is equal to t plus 1. Now, for j is equal to 1 to k, k number of clusters, parameter update or I can say the centroid update. So, centroid is given by summation i is equal to 1 to n u i j q t minus 1 x i summation 
i is equal to 1 to n u i j q t minus 1 and end for j. So, we have to update the centroids. That means, I have to recompute the centroids. That is very similar to the uh, simple k-means clustering. After this, I have to consider the convergence condition. So, what is the convergence condition? I have to consider until a termination criteria termination criteria is met. So, termination criteria is theta t minus theta t minus 1 and we are considering one parameter that is the threshold is epsilon we are considering. So, in this expression actually this actually represents any vector norm any vector norm and this epsilon is a small user defined parameter. In the chemist clustering what we considered for the termination criteria, if there is no significant changes of the position of the centroids in two successive iterations, then I can stop the iteration, I can stop the algorithm. Similarly, in this case also, we are observing if any significant changes of the values of the theta, theta means the centroids in two successive iterations. That means, theta t minus theta t minus 1. So, we are observing uh, that whether in two successive iterations any significant changes in the position of the centroids. If it is less than epsilon, then we can stop the algorithm. That is the termination criteria and that is very similar to the k-means clustering. So, this is the k-means, the fuzzy k-means clustering algorithm. Now, we have defined the membership grade in the equation number 1 in the previous slide. So, if you see the equation number here in the previous slide, we define this membership grid. This is a membership grid. So, we determine the membership grid like this in equation number 1. That is the degree of belongingness. So, how to determine this uij? and that I can show you. So, you have to do some mathematics. So, let us see how we can determine uh, that expression, expression for the membership grid. So, we have the expression for the fuzzy cost function. This expression already you know. So, fuzzy distortion function or the cost function we have shown. So, this is the fuzzy cost function that already I have explained. Now, uh, we are considering the Lagrangian function. So, z theta u summation i is equal to 1 to n, z is equal to 1 to k, u i j q, the distance between x i and theta z i is equal to 1 to n. So, lambda i is nothing but the Lagrangian multiplier. z is equal to 1 to 
k u i j minus 1. So, we are considering this. After this, we have to differentiate j with respect to the membership grid. Suppose, we are considering delta u r s. So, if I differentiate this one, then I will be getting u r s q minus 1 x r theta s minus lambda r and equating it to 0. After this, we have to do some mathematics. I am not showing all the steps. So, finally, you will be getting the membership grid u r s will be something like this 1 summation j is equal to 1 to k d x r theta s d x r theta j one by q minus one. So here r is equal to one to up to n. This variable r is considered to consider the number of samples and s is considered to show number of clusters. So finally we are getting the expression for the membership grade like this. So this is how you can determine the membership grade in the previous slide. So in between you have to do some mathematics. I am not showing all the mathematics here. Uh, you can get in the book, but uh, uh, this is the procedure to determine the membership grade. So you have to consider the Lagrangian function. In this class, I explained the concept of the fuzzy k-means clustering, which is a soft decision based clustering technique. In fuzzy k-means clustering, we have to determine the membership grade, that is the degree of belongingness. That means a particular data point may belong to another cluster. That depends on the membership grade, that is the degree of belongingness. If the membership grade is very high, suppose 0 0.9 or 0 0.8, that means there is a high possibility that particular data sample may belong to another cluster. So that is considered in case of the fuzzy k-means clustering. In the simple k-means clustering, we are not considering that aspect, but in the fuzzy k-means clustering, we are considering that belongingness. And you can understand the fundamental difference between the fuzzy k-means clustering and the k-means clustering. So let me stop here today. Thank you.